トントトトトトントトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトトト And then we're gonna put it about right there. So we need to get some white paint onto our brush. And that's how we're gonna do it. You guys are gonna tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? While we start the old clock over here. Now we're gonna try to get this one done in under 90 minutes. That's the goal, under 90 minutes. So not too long of a show. I don't wanna hang out all night with you guys. I mean, I love yous. I love yous all, but I don't wanna hang out with yous all tonight. Too long tonight, anyway, right? Okay, we're gonna take our portal, we're gonna stick it right there in the front, and then we're gonna come up here, we're gonna go around the edge. Doesn't really matter if you push harder, if you don't. You don't have to be, it doesn't have to be a perfect outside edge because it's a portal painting and not a moon painting, you know what I mean? If it was a moon, it would have to have a perfect edge, when in this case, if you make a little mistake, it's okay. We're gonna take it and pull it down anyway. All these little things are gonna come out at little different Bits of brightnesses and little things, and they're gonna pop out over here and shoot out over there, all like a clock would, right? All the little minutes and seconds and milliseconds of a clock. And then we can go back, brighten it up in certain areas, add a bit more paint, right? Dump it out, go back and hit it with our soft brush. Gotta love the soft brush. It takes everything, makes it nice and soft, can you imagine? So without even moving, ugh. Oh man. Oh, no, I can still reach it. Ha ha. Bang, right there. Got it right there, right? And take our brush, gonna very lightly just start pulling it out. Maybe pull a little bit harder in some areas. It streaks a little bit further, right? You get to decide what it looks like, how hard you're mashing on it, right? How soft you're making it, how much paint is up there, how far you're like shooting it off in different directions. Totally up to you. It doesn't have to be the same all the way around. All right? Bing, bang, boom, pow! Got a cool little portal painting just like that. They're the, literally the most fun things you can paint. Little portal paintings. Just fantastic. Fantasmic. So, you guys are gonna tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich, right? We don't really have to worry about what's happening inside. Doesn't have to be the most perfect little circle. But you don't want it to be too jaggedy, right? That's why we keep our little portal or our、uh, our little guy up there, our little stencil, you can say. And you want to know how I made that stencil? What I did was I took a TV box, right? Customizable, thousands of streaming channels. And I just I took an old TV box and I put a five gallon bucket on the top of it, and traced out the circle, and then went back, cut it out with a razor blade, attached a little handle to it, and now I got my own little, little stencil for a portal. It's pretty easy. All、right, we're gonna take that bit of color that we just mushed up here and we're just gonna come out and spread it across and spread it. Woo hoo 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 hoo! That's looking cool already. Looking cool already. Let's get the teeniest, tiniest little filbert brush that we can find. Little smallest little thing. Let's put it up here into our brightest spot. We're gonna push it flat, try to keep our arms out of the way and rotate it around in a little circle. Get the prettiest little bright white moon you ever done did see. Just so little cute. Just love it. Just love it. What's going on with my connection over here on Facebook? It's not wanting to,、uh, it's wanting to be a pain in the butt. I'm sorry over there on Facebook, guys. It should be better now. I hope it's better now over on Facebook. I had to turn my Wi Fi off. Normally you would think turning it on would be better, but in this instance, we had to turn it off. Okay, now let's come up here with our white paint. All you guys on Facebook, if you missed out, we took our portal, which is our Stencil piece over here, our cardboard stencil made out of a five gallon bucket that we put on a piece of cardboard, and then I just attached a handle to it, kind of popped it through on each side. That way I can hold it, take it away easily. Right? Very cool little thing. So you can use a cake pan or whatever else you have, but we put that around the edge and then we took it and we spread out our colors all the way around this thing, pulled it out some a little bit further, some not, put our space in, dropped our moon in, and now here we go. Let's take our brush, <laughs> play some drums on this sucker, right? So 
Let's come in with our white paint, and we got to keep a little separation. Remember, you don't want to have all the colors. To oh, look at that purple. <laughs> oh, man, I bet you didn't see that coming. You're like, oh, perfect blue everywhere, right? No, there's hidden crimson bits. We're going to come up in here. We're going to start to mix down on those hidden crimson bits, just like this. And the more that we push and pull, the more it's going to blend down. Those little colors. All those differences in there, right? Just fantastic. So, normally I would tell you guys that you could buy this painting, right? I'd be like, oh, this one's for sale. You can get it if you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. But in this case, this one's already sold and you can't have it. So, you missed out. This is a custom one. Somebody wanted a recreation of the one that we just did the other day. So, I was like, absolutely. I love doing recreations. Let's see if we can't get this one just about perfect to the other one. Just about perf, right? Take a little flat bottom cloud out there. May end up looking like a UFO if we're not careful, or if we are careful, right? Come down around, last little bits. I don't want to come too far down because I got to have my ocean down in here, but you got to hide your UFO just a touch. Just a little bit. Pop them, there we go, a little bit higher in the center. Oh yeah, oh yeah, take that same brush. Come down in here, mix it down very soft. I don't want it to grow very far. Remember, we're on the very edge of our horizon of where our water needs to be. So don't let it come down too far. Be about halfway in your circle. And it depends on where you put your colors, right? So we have our crimson out under there and then our blue under here, a bit of crimson and blue together. So we should get some changes as we go across it with our paint, right? So since this one's not for sale and you guys can't get it, it's already sold. I am running a 15% off sale on all the hats all the t-shirts, all the stuff that's in the store. Uh, we've got hoodies for the winter season. We have beanies coming out for the winter season. They're all available. I have brand new posters and little different things. Let's toss a little guy out there like that. Just a little bit of a line. Bang, perfect. All I want right there. So all sorts of stuff on sale. And then the, the paintings are 50. Bought a giant painting for 136 bucks. I'm not even kidding. 136 bucks and they got a wicked huge painting a 30 by 40 right so there are some amazing deals in my shop if you go over there you can get an awesome original painting for like under 150 bucks right now for most of them let's see okay come in here normally when you do a say it's like three paintings right i'm talking about most of them have been lowered down so you can get a new one for very, very, very inexpensively compared to normal, right? Take our little wave out like this, slide them down, do it again. Just a little touch. Fill in a little bit of space back there. A little bit more roundness so you get those peaks, or those double peaks like that. Very cool. Come over here, grab up a bit more white. Oh my God, you guys, I have such big news, by the way. I have gigantic news, and I think I'm allowed to talk about it. Um, you guys know, I've already told you that previously we've uh, done a, <laughs> previously on Paint with Josh, uh, we've done a deal with Diamond Art Club. You know those little things where you pick the diamonds and you put them in the thing, by the time you're done you have a painting? Paint with Josh is going to have diamond art stuff in the store, you guys. So it's going to be so stinking cool. And you guys are going to be able to do my, my paintings in diamond art, which is just blows my mind. So. They emailed me today and asked me to uh, send them my bio and stuff. And then um, they showed me the three paintings that they've already selected that are going forward in production, guys. Oh, oh, it's a big day. It's a big day for Paint With Josh, man. I'm telling you. And I, what was funny is I was just thinking about Diamond Art yesterday. I was like, I wonder how far along they are on the... Uh, on the stuff. I wonder if they've gotten to mine. I wonder if they, you know, if anyone's seen it. I wonder if any of them are good, if they've chosen any of them. And um, turns out, guys, they have, and they're going to be awesome. They're going to be legit awesome. Friggin' awesomeness. A little bit of white peak on that guy, too. Perfect. So I'm super excited about that. I hope that when they hit the store, you guys will go over there and get a a diamond art set or a diamond art kit of Paint With Josh's scenes. And one of them's a portal scene, guys. Oh my God. That's a portal scene. It blew my mind. I was like, yep, yep. That's, that's check influencer. Check, right? Make a portal. 
get Diamond Dart to notice you, and then Diamond Dart picks your portal painting to use as one of your designs. <laughs> what? That's freaking insane. I'm just a dude, man. I'm just a dude who never took an art class, who never took a... I never went to art school, you know what I mean? And now my, my original portal concept is going to be a diamond art painting kit. <laughs> God, that's amazing. That is, literally blows my mind. Just blows me away. Because, like I said, just a normal dude. Never did anything special except for teaching you guys how to kind of cheat our way through painting and make it easy for us, right? That's all. That's all I'm trying to do. Make it easy for you guys. And in return, every so often, somebody buys a painting, keeps me in business, keeps you guys learning, right? We're going to come back here with our white and come underneath our sand. I couldn't believe it, though. I got the email, and I was just literally thinking. It was like Murphy's Law. Like, oh, I wonder. I was thinking about them. And then uh, all of a sudden, poof, there they came into my emails, right? Manifest Destiny. Take our one inch, our two inch brush like this. Now, are we going to go a little bit of pressure or are we going to go a lot of pressure? You guys got to tell me in the comments. After I, after I read all of my congratulations, which I hope to be seeing congratulations. Oh, no, that's cool. Thanks, guys. Appreciate all you guys. I tell you stories from my life and, and no one even likes them. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Let's see. We got little says movie night. Oh, beauty inside you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, Ashley, thank you. It says, congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Congrats. Oh, I love you guys. Do I need special brushes to start? That's a good question. I started with the Bob Ross brushes and never went away from this big two-inch brush anyway and the one-inch brush. I did, I did switch fan brushes, and I've switched filbert brushes, and I switched liner brushes, but I always stayed with the two-inch. So you don't have to get the whole set, but I do recommend that you get the two inch one and the one inch one at least, okay? Now that was a little bit of pressure. I'm gonna pull the same little bit of pressure across and you guys let me know, everyone that thinks, that, or that thought, a little bit of pressure instead of a lot, would you leave your sand looking just like that and walk away? No judgment, it's fine if you would. If not, then you know, tell me no. Like, I made a mistake, Josh. I should have said a lot of pressure, I'm sorry. I apologize, Josh. Please teach me the correct way. Yes, you have to write that entire comment. So, everyone who had said, little bit of pressure, I want to hear from you guys only. Would you leave your sand looking just like that and move on to the next step? And be like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for the next step. What do we do next, right? Would you leave it or would you be like, hmm, that doesn't really look like sand, right? Like, it's not really there yet, Josh. How else do we, how do we make it look like sand? Well, you're in luck. Yes, I just said urine luck, okay? So all the people that said, would you? No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. See all those comments? They wouldn't leave it looking like that and just walk away. Nobody would. So let's come in with a lot of pressure. Bend the bristles, shoot them down, but we're going to try not to go outside of our portal, right? So as, lot of, as much pressure as we can get and remain inside the portal. And now, does that look more like sand? Be honest. You don't have to say yes. If it doesn't, tell me no. It's fine. Not going to hurt my feelings. We're not done yet. So, does that look like sand? And if not, tell me what it does look like. Does it look like a waterfall? Does it look like Aurora Borealis up in the sky? What does it look like to you if it doesn't look like sand? That's the second time I dropped my brush today. Oh, second time today. Remember guys, if you're watching over on YouTube, give me a thumbs up. We got 22 people over there on YouTube and we only have two thumbs ups. That's pretty sad. That's pretty, that's pretty sad. So. Give me a thumbs up over on YouTube. It helps more people come to the stream and see what we're doing here, right? Gets me more, more exposure, right? Now, what the heck are we talking about? Oh, does it look like sand? No, it kind of looks like a waterfall. Kind of looks like, uh, you know, a cliff. Yeah, you're right. It looks like a cliff face. Okay, so we have to do two things. We have to pull it one way and then the other, either which way, right? We got to push it one way and pull it the other or pull it the one way and push it. So you got to tell me, do we push it towards the way first or do we pull it away from the way first? Away, towards, away, towards. Keeping in mind, remember, we wanted to retain our little dark separators. So if we were to push towards the wave first, what do you think is gonna happen? It's gonna close up that gap, right? So you let me know, towards or away? What are we gonna do if we're trying to keep our gaps there? Virginia says away, Kai says away, Movie Night says away. Let's see, Carlos Arriaga says away. 
Michaela says away. Kimberly says away. Jordan says away. It seems like everyone says away. You guys must be regular viewers of the Paint With Josh show. All right, so let's pull it away. Same kind of hard pressure, taking all of our vertical streaks, turning them into horizontal little streakies. Okay, looks a lot more like sand now, right? You gotta give me that. Now, we have to kind of get all this color up underneath. Like we gotta sweep it up underneath that little bit back there. So we're gonna take it and we'll start to push. And as soon as we get close enough where we have that just a little teeniest, tiniest dark separator in there, right? Little teeny, tiny little thing, look at that. Not even as thick as this guy, right? Because this guy's real flat. The thicker that your dark separator is, the taller that your waves are gonna be. That guy up there a little bit. Pop, 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 right? Shrink him down just a touch. Very cool. This guy out here. Make sure our edges remain nice and soft. Man, that's a neat looking one right there, guys. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's see. Why don't we take another filbert brush? We need to make up a little bit of dark color. So you guys let me know what amount or what mixture, what three colors are we mixing up right here in order to create this deep dark mix of this purpley mess. It's gonna look like black paint. It's gonna be so dark by the time we get done that it's gonna look like black, but it's not. It's a mixture of what three colors? Can you guys tell me while we get done mixing it up? Let's see. Crimson, ooh, close. It's crimson, red, and black. It's actually blue, black, and crimson right there. Kylie, first person I saw say it. Bingo, bango, right there. Now, we've got to decide back in here what our little scene is going to look like before we start dropping in our dark mix of blue, black, and crimson to make our gravestones and stuff, right? Let's see, so we're gonna mix up a little of that color, we're gonna grab a little bit of the white, maybe pop it off to the side. It needs to be a bit darker than our color is back here in order for it to stand out, right? So maybe off there, got a little pop. Just pop a little guy back there. A little gravestone hanging out in the water, right? You don't wanna go under that dark separator though. Keep him nice and dark. Don't bring any other color into there. Add a little bit more of our dark color over here. Maybe there's another one, boop. Right there. Just pop them in. Bang! Just like that. It's gonna get darker and darker as they come towards us, right? So this guy over here, maybe he's out on the beach. He's a little bit bigger. He's not sunken yet. All right, just pop him out like that. Very cool. Maybe we got one more little dude. I don't know. Out here. Just popped in. Boop! Bang! Don't wanna make him too crazy, right? Don't wanna make him too far away, too nuts and have too many of them because we're gonna have lots more of them down underneath. All right, we don't need to get too nutty with ourselves over there. Now, let's come into our mead and lamp black and our odorless mineral spirits, okay? Now, that color will remain dark black even though we're crossing all of this light colored paint that we put white on, right? We need it to remain black. So, let's come out Let's put in our little guy. I'm gonna keep him underneath our UFO. Coming down right there. Let's put a little bit of outline of black on this guy. And this meat and black will run forever, guys. Like it just stays on the brush, just continues to dump off black. I don't know what it is, it's like magic. They should have called it meat and magic black because it literally is magic. Come over here, make this guy a little thicker. Pop. Now we're gonna come up there, cross him over, bing, bang, boom. And we got this cool little cross out there. Now, while we're out there, we might as well, well, we got the paint on the brush, we need to outline these little guys, right? That little guy off in the distance, he doesn't need an outline. He's too far away, he's supposed to be faded and hard to see out there, right? But these little guys in the front, they get to have some details and sitch. Why don't we put like a little teeny tiny cross on this guy? Maybe a little paint with Josh cross, so it's got a circle in it. Bang! Man, that's cool! My goodness. Now, we don't want to go too crazy on the deets just yet, but we do need to outline this last guy. And then we're going to put a couple little cracks on him and different things. So, 
out here with that black. Come down. It just separates. It puts like a little line, like an illustrator would have a little line around the outside of his drawing so you could color it in with your color. All right, that way we know where to fill it in with our lines. Maybe if we just get the teeniest, tiniest little bit. Oh yeah, so small. So small out there, just barely. Oh, just barely. Okay, now, here comes the fun part. Trying to take your thinnest, teeniest, tiniest little Zen art brush. These new brushes I found, guys, they're called Zen art brushes. Look at these things. Freaking beautiful little brush set. Go to zenartsupplies.co and they think they come 12 in the set. They sent them to me. They're for miniature painting. And I was like, I don't do miniatures though. I, I'm, I'm not a miniature paintist <laughs> artist. I know I got it. But they're like, you know what? We're gonna send them to you anyway. And I figured maybe I could use a few of them to do cool little branches and see how they worked and see how I could you know, tell you guys about them. And uh, I, I've been, ever since I used, I pulled one of them out, I've been using it nonstop. So zenartsupplies.co for these little teeny tiny liner brushes. They're friggin' awesome. What was I gonna do? Was I getting out another one? Or was I just gonna tell you guys about it? No, you know what? Let's get out another one because we're gonna do super tiny. Oh man, look at the size of this dude. Ho, 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 ho. Look at the size of this guy. This thing's like a needle. It's so thin. All right, don't watch me struggle. Don't do that with your teeth, kids. Don't do it with your teeth. Look at how thin this little guy is. Oh, it's like it's smaller than a nose hair. Oh, <laughs> it's all right. This painting will have a couple boogers in it. It's fine. It adds to the uh, adds to the um, value. Adds to the value. Now, I've never used this this teeny tiny brush before. It's brand new out the pack. So, we're gonna see what it looks like. Oh man, it's so perfect. Around the edge little things on the inside and we ran out of paint that's okay go back in I mean that with I'm talking about the smallest teeniest tiniest amount of white paint on there down here you can probably see it better the teeny tiny not a ball not a glob of paint just a little bit and if we can fill in just the top corners of that little cross oh right there it just makes it stand out now now look at that, what I just say. We don't want to have a ball of paint on there, especially on this little knife. We're just gonna take that little ball of paint off by rolling it off, come out here, pop in our last little thing off the side. Little guy right there. Maybe this guy's got a white outline. Pink. Oh man, that brush is so small. Just so. Tiny, tiny. Do the coolest friggin' things with it. Now let's come up here. I don't want to cover up the black, right? We just want to go on top and to the side of the black, leaving the majority of the black there. Do you hear me? Do not cover all of the black. You don't want your white highlight to be as big as your black line. That's why we switch to a much smaller brush. Bring it down like that. That's cool. Right? It's got to be a, such a thin, small, little baby little line. Maybe off the tip top of this guy. Down around the side. Right? Still leaving some of that dark line underneath there, though. So you can still see that it's got that original black line on uh, underneath. But it's got a little bit of that white on the top. Oh, so cool. <laughs> Sorry, I've been watching, uh, I've been watching, um, I'm drawing a blank now. The Pirates of the Caribbean. I was watching Pirates of the Caribbean last night. That's why if anybody tried to, uh, message me last night or write to me after the show, there was no contact. I put on Pirates of the Caribbean and I just chilled and I was editing videos and, that was my night. It was lovely. It was lovely. No distractions. It's fantastic. Put a little bit of white on the top. And every so often you got to do that. You know what I mean? You got to break away from the fans and just be paint with Josh all by myself. Just be me for a little while. You know what I mean? I got to. I got to break away from you guys sometime. Okay. So 
That looks amazing right there. Now we're gonna come in, we're gonna take our same bit of white that we've been using because we have all these undercolors down and maybe this little guy, he's got a little bit of color to him. Just a little bit of that white's gonna blend in with that purple mix and make it start to look like cement almost instantly. Come over here, over, down, over, down, just like a waterfall. Just like we do waterfalls. Very lightly so it breaks and stuff and then you can mix it in. You don't wanna have too much paint on the brush, that's for sure. Don't be having too much paint. Pull it down. You can always go back and add in your little uh, dark line around the side again. Don't worry about that, right? Work them until they're whatever color you want them to be. Maybe this guy had just a little touch, but not too much. Otherwise, that white line, not going to make any sense. There we go. A little bit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. How did you get so good, Josh? It's all luck. It's all luck, you guys. All luckiness. All right, a couple of these guys, I forget where I am here, had a uh, couple of little cracks hanging off the edge of this guy, almost like it was going all the way through and the whole top's gonna pop off of him like that. Very cool. Remember that meat and black with the odorless mineral spirits will go for a mile and do wonders for you. I really suggest you get it. I use it along with the Bob Ross set and the Windsor & Newton set that we used uh, with the Gamble in 1980. I use them all. And now we use Meaden, and I've always used that little brand called Magic Fly. You guys know that brand. Little brand called Magic Fly. They're really cool. Uh, really super wet paints, good for highlights and stuff. Big old crack coming from the bottom of this guy, right? Almost like a lightning bolt, which is fun. Just have your own little lightning action out here, right? Trying to stay out of your guys' way. Very light. Little things, little details. We don't have to see much out there. This is way out in our portal. It's not even our... Um, not even our focal point, all right? Our focal point will be down here with all of these guys. But you guys know paint with Josh. I love putting lots of stuff out into my painting. So let's take a little bit. This is where we kind of crapped the bed the other day when we did it. And uh, I wasn't very happy with my palm tree and I had to work at it and work at it and scrub it off the canvas and work at it again and work at it again. So hopefully we can get it right this time uh, on this first go. Hopefully, we'll take that little bit of dark paint we come in here, I'm gonna pop it up and it's gonna land about right there. So depending on where you want it to be, be very little, very small, fatter and fatter and fatter, put a little curve in it. Like it's leaning out that way, right? Now, in my mind, like I've always said, there's always a bit of like a centerpiece where everything is coming out from, okay? Now, let's get a brush that's not too ginormously huge and not too small. Just right, let's get a Goldilocks brush. We're gonna load it up on just the end. We don't need the whole bristles down. We just want the end covered, All right? And let's say we pop out like a little stringy little thing that comes out like that. And then towards the end, we're just gonna kind of wrap, and whip it down, All right? Just pull on it a little bit. Get your soft little palm tree leaf out there in the distance. Now I like doing a bunch and then I like doing the ones that are behind as well because you have to imagine that the ones back here gonna be hanging off of the tree, right? Falling down, maybe blowing in the wind. Who knows, this guy may be out here. And they're not gonna be like a pinwheel. They can't be like a pinwheel because it's gonna cover up too much, right? Can't go all the way up. So I like bringing mine just about like that. It's like a little umbrella. Drag around the side, get a little downward whip to it, right? And then remember, we gotta keep them dark because we're gonna highlight them a little bit. So go back in, couple little whips of our little branches and stuff. Come down back into our trunk so it stands out. It's like that. That's actually, I like that. That I like. Don't even have to go crazy. Now there always are a couple little bits, at least around the palm trees in Las Vegas. There's always a couple little bits at the top that are either like the little flowery sections or whatever they are. But you always have a few, right? Now we gotta go back and highlight that guy, make all the colors stand out against him. And then it should be cool. But all we did was what? I don't know, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven. Seven little things, imagining that they're all kind of hanging down versus being like a pinwheel all the way around like that, right? That's gonna look funky. That's gonna look funky. I've done it, don't, don't get me wrong, I've done it. I have done it for sure. 
All right, let's get a little of our liquid white, perhaps a bit of our crimson -y paint, maybe from the Meaden set. That might look really cool. Grab a bit of our titanium white, pop that over here just to brighten it up a touch. Come out and let's say just off the top, a couple little bits of like, just a little bit of color out there, right? We have to leave some stuff. Gonna leave the kind of mystery, you know what I mean? These guys back here, little bits. Again, it's not our focal point until we get down in front. And there we go. That's not too bad, actually. There we go. All right now, up underneath, I'm gonna stick a little bit of darkness. Like little guys, just to just to add a little bit of depth in there, right? Because it tends to get very mixed in with all of our colors and stuff. So, a little bit of dark, a little bit of dark. Now, let's come down off of the other edge. Maybe we came down, a couple of them gotta come this way, right? Gotta come that way, bang. There we go, that's not too bad, Joshy. I like that. Couple little bits. Little things hanging down, hanging around. And then let's take a little bit of our that same kind of reddish, crimson ish paint. Come down a little this bit. Just a little touch on the side of our trunk over here. All the way up, just very lightly tapping at the trunk. Come back with our darkness, and then we'll have a dark bit of trunk. Gotta have it be that, uh, have that uh, extra detail around the back, right? Now I'm gonna get a little bit of liquid white on the brush. Very teeny tiny liner brush. We're gonna come out here, we're gonna start making our little swipes as we go across. Now we're gonna have to go back and load up the brush again. But again, palm trees out where I live. We got these little suckers that go around the edge. Like little drag marks almost, you know what I mean? But when we're not on a white canvas, you can't drag away the paint and reveal that there's nothing there because it would just be black underneath. So, make our little streaks, go back and fill them all in. There we go. That's looking pretty neat, actually. Thanks very much. The problem with the liquid white is that it goes away so fast, it wants to blend in with those other colors. I'll make it darker and darker towards the bottom. We don't need it to be so super bright down here, right? There we go. Very cool. I like him out there in the wet sand. I like him. All right, now I'm gonna get a little bit more paint on the brush. We're gonna come back from here. Out, down, around, spin it, rotate it, pull it around, get our little bit of water happening out there. There we go, baby. So softly, just sliding them back. Little teeny tiny details, just like that. Perfection. Perfection. Now we come around the front of this guy with our knife. You know, hold him a little bit. Sliding back towards our water back there. Very cool. Very cool. Take this guy just so softly. To the front, to the back, side to side, from the window to the wall, wherever you want to go. Hey, very cool. If you don't like a spot, Pull it down, blend it away, right? Easily take stuff away, very simply, very easily, just like that. Now, let's move on. That was a half hour portal, guys. That actually wasn't too bad. I hope you guys on TikTok have been tapping and I don't have to zip my lips, if you know what I mean. Mm. That's a cool looking painting. Mm. That's a cool looking painting, you guys. Cool, cool, cool. Eating pizza? I'm jealous. I am jealous. All right, now, we gotta come back. Let's wash some brushes off. So, you guys are gonna answer a question for me. Let's say that the world is about to fall into a black hole in about an hour, and for whatever reason, the DoorDash people are still working, and you've got one meal that you get to DoorDash for your last meal on Earth. Tell me what it is. I can't wait to hear it. I'm gonna wash some brushes off. You guys are gonna tell me what your favorite last meal would be. What are you DoorDashing or Uber Eatsing or whatever? 
What are you getting for your very last meal? Tell me in the comments section below while I clean off these brushes and get right back to finishing our scene. All right. It's always a lot of cleanup when you do a portal painting because it's like painting two paintings in one painting. I was telling the buyer that. I was like, look, are you okay with this one being a little bit more expensive than the one you just bought? Because it basically is two paintings in one. And they're like, yeah, no, yeah. I'm okay with it. I said, okay, let's do it. So that's what we're doing tonight. We're doing a custom painting. And you guys aren't allowed to have it. It's already purchased. Which are my favorite ones, right? Well, they're kind of, they're, they're my favorite ones, but they're also my nemesis. Because, okay, it's already bought. But now all the pressure rides on me to make sure that it's perfect and that it's, you know, if somebody's watching me paint it and they buy it, cool, you've seen it come together, right? But if you're expecting something and I give you something else, you're going to be like, uh, I didn't pay for this. I wanted this, right? So that's uh, part of when they sell early. That's the pressure that I get from uh, at least my own brain kind of freaking out about got to be perfect. It has to... You know, it's got to look very similar to what they want. Can't go off on my own direct. Even if I see something fancy or if I, if I want to try something different, I got to forget it and wait for the next painting because I don't want to go too far off from whatever we would decide it on. Like we agreed on this and then I gave you this. I'm sorry. <laughs> my brain took me in that direction. I'm so terribly sorry. Okay, let's see what you guys are eating for your last meals on Earth. And I bet you a pineapple is going to fall right out the end of this thing. <laughs> it's going to drop right out. Big old, like, Hawaii pineapple. I can feel it just pop right out there. And I'm going to go pick it up off the beach. I'm back. Chop top off. Eat it. <laughs> All right, let's see what you guys are eating. Is it a pineapple? Hey, uh, Christy Val, Avail became the uh, 684th member of the team. You're awesome. You're awesome. So uh, since you did that, since you became a member of the team, TikTok should give you access to a link to my Discord. And then you'll be able to join my Discord with all of us crazy people over there. Right? All of us wild animals over there on Discord that uh, chit-chat all day. Thank you for the little gummy bears and stuff. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Okay. Now we got to come in and complete the rest of our scene. So after cleaning off the brushes, why don't we clean off this mess so I stop getting it on my shirt. That would be good. <laughs> I don't even know why. I, I should just paint naked. I should do it like just in my underwear like, uh, like uh, uh, the guy from, how am I forgetting his name from Breaking Bad? Walter White, right? Does it in his underwear. I should just paint my underwear and then I can never get paint on my clothes. That would be good, All right? Let's come in here. Big old fan brush like that. Gonna come in, grab up some white. We don't need to have too much paint on the brush. Remember, on a black canvas, it shows very, very brightly with just a little bit of paint on the brush. Now let's come down under here, not trying to uh, get rid of all of our little details of our Aurora and stuff, but we gotta pop in some clouds. I have them in here. A little bit of color as it pops up over there. A little bit down here, right? Wherever we want it to be, just big nasty mess. You're like, oh my goodness. Yeah, I enjoyed the whole thing until you did that, right? Just watch. Just give me a second. We're gonna start to mix it down with our pressure. We get to decide, like, okay, we want that to be a little brighter, so let's move on. Maybe we wanna work it a little bit more down here, so let's push a little bit harder. Blend it a little bit more so it's just more kind of color than any details, right? All depends on what we wanna do with our pressure. Under pressure. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. No, nobody? That's okay. Bing, bang, boom. The more we push down here, the harder we smash the thing, the more kind of bottom of our cloud that we're going to get that goes off. You know what I mean? Off around the globe, all you flat earthers. Around the globe. Just like this globe, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to start a flat earth debate. Let's come over here, clean this guy off, and then we're gonna go pop in a bunch of deep dark trees back here, right? So we're gonna need more of those three colors that we like to mix up all the time to make a deep dark shadow. Does anybody know the three dark colors out there in internet land? 
Do you know the Muffin Man or the three colors that Paint With Josh uses to make up a deep, dark shadow? Just tell me in the comments while I mix all these guys up right here. Jess81 says blue, black, and crimson. You are correct. Yes, Thomas, I have a Discord now. Yes, I know, I do. I do have too many social media platforms. That's why I'm not on your Discord. And ask my girls and everyone in my Discord, I'm not on my Discord either. <laughs> I just have one for the fans. It's like a group chat room for the fans. And uh, I'm barely even on there. Ask them. Go ask them. If you ever see Paint With Josh inside of group chat, oh my goodness, you better jump in there quick because I'm not in there very often. I'm not in there very often. Okay, we're going to mix up our deep, dark colors, just like that. Over yonder, and then we're going to take that same brush that we just used to make our clouds with. We washed it off. It's all nice and clean. And let's come in and just really sharpen it down, right? Taking it, wiggling it through the paint. Look at all those little designs that you drag through the paint like that, right? Flip the brush over, wiggle it down again. Wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it. Look at how sharp it becomes. It fills all the bristles. It keeps them all together. Now, we're going to have to do that about three, four times all the way across the canvas. Because as soon as you start to pop in, and you start smacking against the canvas, going up and down and up and down, sort of at a 45 degree angle away. So you're just tapping the top of the branch, right? Which gives it that sharp top. And when you start splitting your brush apart, right? I'm gonna get a couple more off of that guy. Bang, right? Once you start splitting your brush, go back, load it up, wiggle it down again. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. No? All right, nobody gets me, it's fine. Come up here, maybe they're way up here on the side. Now, everywhere underneath, because we're only worried about what our top little heart monitor looks like, right? Boop, 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 right? Across the edge. I have an irregular heartbeat. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> but just like that, everything underneath doesn't make two bits of difference. We can just literally smash the brush, mushing it, getting all the color all onto the canvas. Basically getting rid of the light color from dragging so we have a dark base down here, right? Very simply, very easily, how to paint 10,000 trees way off in the forest. Now, you can see some of them are disconnected from the other tree, right? Wait till we do this. We're gonna take our two inch brush. Looks a whole lot like this big old monster. Now, two inches is big, ladies. Imagine doing your, your makeup with this sucker. That's a brush and a half. Now we're gonna push hard until we get to the top. So we're dragging until we get to the top, and then we pull away. Dragging until we get to the top. Pull away. Pull away. Pull away. Pull away, right? Look at how much pressure we're pushing down here. Enough to leave a brush mark, right? Enough to shake the whole canvas. Push it. Pull it away when you get to the top. And that way it fills in all the bits around the bottom. All, right? all those little pieces get all filled in. You don't see a whole lot of light come through here. You can see some light coming down through our little streaky bits, which is fine. A little bit of light poking through our forest isn't bad. But you don't want to have a whole lot. You don't want to have like chunks or gaps. And you don't want to have them all the same level. It would look like a bunch of brush out there, right? It'd look like a hedge that somebody went out there and trimmed if they were all the same level. So make them crazy, make them nuts. And then here comes one of the most fun parts of the whole thing is making the mist, right? How do you make the mist, Josh? I get it all the time. Get it all the time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you real quick. See how much more paint I can get onto this shirt. There's a fair amount of dark in there, but it's okay. I'm going to tap in the brush just like that. So it's not a whole lot of paint. It's just a little bit of paint. Watch how much there actually is. Oh my. Uh, all right. Look at all that. Just nastiness, right? Bang. Now all the paint's off of the brush. It's taking all the darkness away. Now we can start to mix that paint together each time that we go it's gonna mix, it's gonna go and when we pull it away. All right, each time that we mix. So we start top corner of the brush, not this part. There's a whole lot of space down under here. Look at that, get a little tickle, get a little tickle on the bum. Right down there, right? Back in here, all we're doing is just smushing on it and bringing it down, all right? Let it mix in with all those other things. There's all these other colors under the canvas. Same that we have the crimson and blue up here. There's crimson and blue down here. So it's constantly mixing. It's mixing with the color of the trees, with the under colors, and with the white. And so we're just pushing on it, just with the tip of the brush. Again, coming up a little bit higher, coming down, up, down, up, whoop, 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 whoop. Doesn't hell have to be the same thing across, right? Come over here, really work this guy. 
now we've taken our paint that was really thick, all that darkness, we smushed it, we mashed it, and then we came in and we blended it. And so this area has now become as soft as the original unpainted canvas. That means you can add layer upon layer of stuff onto it. All right, that's the cool bit. Got to layer stuff into it. A little mist up in there. Now your mist can be as bright as you want or as dark as you want. If you want it a little bit brighter, then you got to come back in with a little bit more of the white onto our brush, right? And you can do it almost like you're making clouds, just like this. If you didn't get enough, go back in there with a little cloud. All right, pop in a couple little details. Now we're going to have two different colors because we have that very light mix and then a new section of white. It's going to look like multi-depth bit of fog, right? Again, coming in with our one inch brush this time because the two inch brush is dirty and I don't feel like uh, cleaning it. And we're gonna come back a little bit less pressure, right? We're not smashing this. We're hitting it with less pressure. So it's gonna leave little brighter areas and darker areas and little things, right? So we have our original mashed up color, some of that original color back here, our very deep dark, our unpainted area, all these little different bits. Look at that little spot back in here. It's all dark, it's all bright. This bit we mix up a little bit more up into the trees. Ooh, look at all that. Very cool. All up to us, right? Mix it in, push it around, up and down, maybe go backwards, spin it up here. Bing, bang, boom. You got this really cool little bit of light again, right? It's all about light, dark, 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 right? All the way down. It's all you have to do. Back and forth and back and forth. Now we're gonna take this brush. That's actually washing brush. We gotta get these things clean. We gotta get them clean. We got 45 minutes to finish the scene. I think we'll be done in way less time than that. Way less time than that. Now, how to make grass out of our limited palette of blue, crimson, black, uh, our other crimson and our white. Really, you're only using four or five colors in this painting. So, in order to make our little grassy bit, right, if we were just to take white out there, it might end up looking like snow, you know what I mean, if we start doing that. It's not really going to mix in very well. So, we have to sort of pre-mix it, and it's coming in with a little bit of our crimson color, dabbing it in back there, coming down, got a little bit of pinky grass, right? And the more we mix that little spot in, the more it'll go away. Little teeny tiny taps. <laughs> Right? A little bit of far away little grass happening. And the more that we come towards us, the more we kind of pivot. Come up here, go back down. Come up here again, go back down. We start to bring our land around. Look at those little marks like that. They're kind of, you get up to this hill and they fall over down the side. Doesn't all have to be the same. And obviously if you want it to happen a little bit faster, use a bigger two inch brush. But I like the way that the grass looks with the one inch brush versus the two inch brush. I don't like how the two inch brush overfills certain areas when the one inch brush, you can take it and fill in little spots and get little differences, right? It looks like a wave of land out there. And don't worry about the color. We can always go back and brighten it. This little bit is almost like a sketch, right? We're just kind of putting the color out there just to see what it might look like if we were to continue on in that angle and then we can go back and brighten it up. Always with the brightening. You got to go back and brighten it. it has to be brighter. Come over here, get a little bit more of our crimson, maybe a little bit of our medium crimson, pop that guy in. A little bit more white, and we'll change, maybe a little bit more crimson, that might be too white now. There we go. Come back here, oh yeah, right? Pop that guy in, have him line up with our bit of grass. Maybe we got our little hill starting to go down this way. All right, little things, and the more you fill it in, the more it's gonna look like grass. You don't wanna fill it in everywhere. Right? You gotta leave little dark areas. And no one's gonna be looking down at the grass. They're gonna be looking at the stuff that's in the grass. So don't worry about what it looks like. That's what I always say. Back here, a little bit more of our just straight mead and uh, crimson. That's a mix with all the colors that are already on the brush. That way we don't have to add anything. It stays a little bit darker, right? Now, what if we get a little bit of this red? Ooh, a little bit of red action. Right? This guy came down like this. Just tapping her in, little things, little things. And again, it's not anything but a little bit of background color for our foreground to stand out against, right? 
very softly, wiping it away. Don't need too much out there. Don't want to have too many details. Don't want it to be too bright in certain areas. You're not going to like it if it's like that, right? Now this guy, bring in, bring him in a little bit wider. Right? Little things, dabbing it in. Back into our little palette, dab it back in. Turning the brush as we go down. Over here, dab it in. Little things. All these little bits of blue and white. And pink and crimson and all these gorgeous little colors. We get a cool little field out there, right? And again, we're not going to be looking at the field. Very lightly swiping at it, by the way. We're not going to be out here looking at it because we're going to be focused on our gravestones and stuff that are in the front. So don't worry about it too much. Pop it out like that. A couple little bits. Little differences, right? A little pink, a little purple, a little blue, a little darker color, whatever that is over there. Darker blue, black, whatever it is. A little bit of action over there, right? Now, here comes the fun part. We'll take our filbert brush, just like we did up here. We'll come back. We'll load it up with that same dark mix that we just created all of our little trees with and such, right? And then we'll decide. Maybe we got some faraway little bits. And they start popping out way off in the distance. And we come back, we get some more paint. Maybe this guy over here, use a little bit bigger. Boop, boop. Maybe it's a far away little mausoleum or something, who knows? It's like a miniature version of Dome on the Rock right there. Dome of the Rock, excuse me. Now, over here, right, let's say, um, put a little teeny guy, boop, back there. Maybe a little guy off in the distance. All depends on their size. Depends on how close they get to us, right? Out there like that, very simply. Maybe we got another one right here. Almost touching our other guy too. Bang, right? We start to build and come forward just like that. Now back here, we should, probably should have done this first. Soften these little guys before we put the foreground guy in. But hey, it's paint with Josh. We do how we're gonna do. We do how we do. Back in, just tapping at him, tapping at the base. Now watch, we can always go over this front guy again. He needed to be a little bit darker anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You can even take a fan brush and do it if you want. Pop, pop, bang, fill him in. Bring him into the foreground like that. The further they are, right? Close, or the bigger they are, the closer they look. Let's take this guy, watch. We're gonna go about halfway up the side of this guy in the back, and then a little bit past his base. Make them a little thick, a little dark, and it's gonna make it look like that guy is in front of this guy, right? Because we came up about halfway above, or about halfway in the middle, excuse me, of his, from his top to his top, came down in front of his base, makes him look a lot further away. Now, let's see, we gotta pop in some little crisscrossies back here. Crisscrosses. Pop a couple of them off the tip tops of our, our little guys back here. This mead and paint, you guys, it just runs for a mile. It is so nice and smooth. So smooth. Dang. This guy we need to work on some more. He's not, he's not blended enough. Oh, we got our, I picked up my cloud brush accidentally. So in this case, we're sort of highlighting him. A little bit of lighter colored paint. Touch that guy back there. Just a littlest bit though. We just want him to stand out. Small little bits. Not everyone has to be the same amount of brightness, right? So just mix it down. It'll mix into the perfect gray color for a tombstone anyway. If you just let it mix. A little bit of white. Go over here on this bigger guy. Over to the left and down. Switch the brush over to the right and down. Just like a, a waterfall. Exactly how we paint the waterfalls, right? Back in, now you can fill them up a little bit brighter. Try not to go outside of your line, right? If you go outside of your lines, then you kind of almost have to make him bigger and extend it and stuff. So try to stay inside the lines just a little. Maybe one hair or two flick outside the lines, okay. You don't want to go too crazy. See how they're getting brighter as they come towards us too? Darker, a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter, brightest. Closest one so far. Easy little things, guys. Tap them at the base. I like doing it at a downward angle, too. So this angle's up a little bit higher than that guy. And then you can come in and really make him look 3D. If you take our Liquitex 
or sorry, our uh, mead and black, right? The lamp black around the edge, creating his outline. And then we take a little bit more. I'm gonna try to stay out of your guys' way. Come we'll grab it from the side over here and just very lightly, very small until you get to the side and then boom, straight down like that. Give it like a little 3D feel, like it's a block of stone out there, right? So simply and easily done, guys. Now you can go back and add different, um, different details, different all sorts of stuff to it if you want it. But that's up to you. What do you want yours to look like? I always, always say that. Let's put another little guy in over here. Oh, you know what? This guy can be, let's bring him down like this on his one side and then we'll bring him like cracked in half. Poop, just like that. Almost like the top done fell off. Right, the top has fallen off of our poor old guy over here. And probably rolled along back, but uh, we can't see where it went, right? Now remember, you want it to be, it's kind of hard to explain, but you want it to be a little fatter where you want your break, and I'll show you why. So we're going to make it look 3D right there. It'll be really cool. Really cool. There we go, perfect. Little guy just sitting right out in the front. We might as well do one more. We got a little bit more paint, a little bit more paint. And this guy, maybe we'll have a chunk missing out of him. So if he came over this way and stopped and then came over that way and went down and then had like a little keyhole sort of missing from inside of him, right? Almost like an open lock. Take our bit up here, fill it in. You don't need the hole to be too big because we're going to make it look bigger with our highlights. So don't worry about it. Out here on the edge, nice and straight. Just like that. Pop, 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 pop. Nice and dark, however big you want to make yours. And we're just filling them in, filling them down. It's got like a little keyhole, like a notch missing out of it. Very cool looking. Actually, let's wipe this part away. Get rid of that whole bit of paint off of there, right? Why do you wear gloves, Josh? Oh, I don't know. You guys tell me. Dang, tap it in, got a little bit of grass in the back like it was never there to begin with, right? And then we can do all sorts of craziness. Let's get a little bit more dark though. Get more dark down here. It'll pop up like a little bit on the side. Yes. All right, let's grab some white. It's on the same brush, it's gonna go over to the side and down just like a waterfall. Fill them up like that. We can always go back and darken it and uh, put the shadows and stuff in. So, doesn't have to be super bright white, but you want them to be pretty bright. We're out here in the front, right? Over to the side and down, fill that guy in. Now you can see how we left a little bit of darkness back there and how it makes it look more 3D. That's what we're gonna do around the edge right here. And I'll show you how. I'll show you how I would do it anyway. Cause that's what it's about, right? I don't try to claim that I'm some expert. I'm just trying to teach you how I would do it and how my brain says, okay, do that. Okay, that, that's good, do that. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> do that, but don't do that. And then tell the people how you did that. That's how my brain works. Okay, let's take this crazy old guy over here and let's say, I don't know, around the edge, we gotta have our outside line, right? To break him up from the rest of the scene and all the colors behind him just makes him stand out a little bit. And like I'm telling you, that mead and black paint stuff is the business. Is the literal biz. If we came out like this, but then we came down a bit, blacked in all of that stuff back here. Right? Just really mushed it on there. And that way, look, it's gonna look 3D instantly, especially when we put a little white highlight on the outside line. It's gonna look really cool. A couple little jagged bits, maybe we got a broken piece popping up out of there, something like that. Take this guy down like that. Very cool little piece right there, guys. Okay, so, perfection. Get our little bit of meeting over here. Come down, let's say this was our, our side that we could see, right? So it came down like that, and then this would obviously be our broken piece around to the edge, All right? So we got two bits of a broken stone right like that. It's pretty simple. When you really think about it, it's not too hard. Maybe we had a big old crack run through this guy too. Like a whole rest of his thing is just gonna about to crack his way off. <laughs> big old cracks coming out of here. 
Now I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use this guy as my signature one right here. And what I've been doing on all these guys is taking my JK and putting it as on a on a tombstone. It's very morbid, but on some of them we give our our birth year and our death year, which I I selected as like a hundred years into the future, 2085, from my birth year anyway. So a hundred years to rule the art land. From paint with Josh. Dang, that's cool. Now check this out. What if we take a little bit of white, same brush, a little bit of white on the back side of here, right, where we have all these little details. A little jagged little bits. Right? Does that make it look like it's kinda, kinda, it's kinda too bright right here. So let's go over it again. Right, until we can dull it down where it just picks up enough where you can be like, ooh, okay, I see the other side to the, to the edge of the stone like that. And in which case, we may have to highlight this side in white as well. Down his little crack. That sounded bad, but down the crack. Does that work better? Eh, yeah, sort of. Again, it's a bit too bright. So all we got to do is work it in. Work it in until it's a small or as dark as we want it to be. That's very cool. Let's come back over. We're gonna do the same sort of concept of a thing right here, just by filling it in with black. So let's come in, take away the top, right? So now we can see there's a bit of busted, you know, like a bit of thick stone right there. And then if we were gonna make it a little thicker, what if that piece came down, shot right down through there, and that way it looks like it's more kind of 3D. Just like that. Broken little piece over here. Very cool. Very cool. A couple of these little guys. A little bits of white as we go off. Just along the very outside edge of the brightest of our dark part, right? Just so it catches a little bit of light back from the moon that's way back up here in our in our scene. Man, it's getting hot in here. Okay, let's come back. Well, a couple more details are missing that we need to have, like a little bit bigger. Oh, it was on this one, actually. A little bigger of a cross through the first line, but not through the second. You want it to end in the cement. Right there, do a little circle, a little circle. I'm telling you that mead and black is like writing with a pen. If you don't have mead and black, mead and lamp black paint, right? I got the whole set, they sent it to me. And of course, they paid me to talk about it once. They paid me to do a video twice, right? This is a free promotion just because I love it so much. It's like, you, you can't beat it. I, I've never found a black paint darker. You cannot beat it. Honestly, let's come up here and make another little cross right down through there. How tall do you want it to be? How close do you want it to sit in your foreground? Totally up to use. Back right there. Dang, right? Cool little thing. But some of the times in our foreground, they look a little funky when they're only one brush length. So watch, let's make it two. Come across, go right next to him. And another little brush length that just thickened him up, made him a little more close to us because he's a little thicker. Let's come down under this guy, make him a little thicker. There we go. Now we can go back and hit that with some white. Little, uh, little white highlights on the outside. Same back here, same as we did up on those guys. And we should be in pretty good shape. And it's only been an hour, so that is pretty good. We still have to we've got to do a few more things and put a, put a big tree in over here and a big tree in over here, but we're almost there. We're almost done. We're moving along. We're, we're moving and grooving. Now we're gonna come over here onto this side, take our white on the outside of the black, but have them connect. Come over to this side, pop them in, right? Get a little L shape right there. Now, load up some more white, come down the side again, just like this, very small, very light, right? Doesn't even have to be the same amount of white. See how the white kind of died off because it started to mix in with that black? Look at how the black just chews that white right back up. 
doesn't even lighten it. Just chews it up, spits it out. Ah, pfft, take your white. We're gonna remain black over here. Like if we did that with Bob Ross black, it would immediately turn this very light purpley color. And this mead and black is the biz, bro. It's the bees meases. Here we go, very neat. Now, I'm gonna take our little last little piece right up on the top. Now you don't wanna come and touch it directly to the corner here. You have to give it about an eighth of an inch space when you pull it out. And that way it'll make it look better. If you bring it all the way in, your brightness is gonna to be too close to themselves, okay? Don't do that, guys. Don't do that. Tap in our base. Poppy, 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 just like that. Very cool. Very, very cool. Now, I'm gonna wash off some of these brushes again. We're gonna go pop in our giant trees. You guys gotta start coming up with a name for this painting because we're gonna to have to name it before we end the old stream, so. Remember guys, I ha I'm having a 50% off sale. I haven't talked about it since the beginning of the show. So 50% off in my Etsy store, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Okay, go over there and uh, it's 50% off all original paintings, 15% uh, off hats and shirts and bags and clothes and all sorts of stuff. So go check it out. I've got tons and tons of stuff over there. Um, Somebody just bought a big giant painting for 136 bucks because it's 50% off, you know what I mean? So you can get wicked awesome deals if you go check out paintwithjosh.com. Uh, sorry, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And uh, let me know what you think over there. This one actually looks like a little pumpkin way out here. Way off in the distance out there. Ra -ta 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 -ta. And then a little more of my mead and black because that white line is just too thick out there. It's almost as thick as the line right next to it, and this is much further away. So we got to go up, shrink it back to the edge with the black, pushes the white out. Look at that. Makes it so much smaller and harder to see back there, right? Again, when we're doing the liquid white details, you just got to have the smallest little teeniest, tiniest little touch. Because you push too hard with your brush and guess what's gonna happen? You're not gonna like it. Little, small, small little things that only the buyer is gonna notice when they end up getting the painting. You know what I mean? You don't have to see every single piece of every single stone or whatever out there, right? Does it all have to be like that? Never all has to be the same. Not around paint with Josh, anyway. I don't like stuff to be all the same. Never like it to be all the same. Never, never, never. Awesome. Awesome. All right, let's put in those big trees. Let's get our little teeniest, tiniest brush because I'm going to have to do these little... Uh, these little, this little teeny tiny cross down here. Don't know why I decided to do one so small and have it so up front right here. But with this little brush, it's literally a piece of cake. Literally a piece of cake. Like these little Zen Art Supply, zenartsupplies.co is where I got this little teeny tiny brush. All right, so head over there and check them out. Check them right out. Now, there's too much white in there, so we have to go back in with our black, reshape it again, kind of push the white back. Got a little sloppy in there, right? So we'll come in like this, cut down through it again, cut through it over here, back around with our little circle, cleaning it all up. Boop. Now it's just got a little bit of shininess inside there ends up looking really stinking cool okay wicked all right you guys start coming up with a name for this one and then we're gonna end up putting in some trees but they don't take very long they don't take long to do for those trees so 
start coming up with a name. What would you want to name this one? If you had just painted it, if it was your very first painting or your 1,000th painting. By the way, guys, I just passed, I surpassed 1,001 sales on Etsy. Cha-ching. <laughs> in four years, we've had 1,001 sale on Etsy. That's awesome. It's literally incredible. Blows my mind. This painting was actually the thousandth sale. It was a custom uh, painting, right? They, they bought it as a custom listing. And it was the 1,000th sale in my store, which is like historic. Just historic. And that's just online sales. That's not talking about all the other... Because my daughter goes, how's that possible, Dad? You've only painted 961 paintings. And I'm like, yeah, but we sold shirts and hats and posters and canvas prints and different stuff, right? It's all different things, so it all counts it as a sale. doesn't matter if it's a painting or not. There we go. A little bit of black and blue mix right here. Only because we ran out of crimson. I don't want to get any more out of the box. Just like that, we're going to come up here. Let's go on this guy up into the portal bit very lightly as we come down. doesn't have to be so thick. Push, push harder as you get down here to the front. It makes our trunk a little bit fatter, right? Come back. We're going to load up some more of the black and blue. Just mix them up right here in their piles. I really have to clean this palette up. I really should probably clean that up. Now we're going to come over here. We're going to go a little bit taller. Wish he was a baller. A little bit taller. A rabbit and a hat with a bat. You know. Come down here. Smush. Boom. Right? Bringing all that stuff down. Now every so often, I try to add a little bit of my lamp black paint into the uh, tree trunks because it's just going to help keep it dark. All right? doesn't want to blend in. Look at the difference. The lamp black from when we just did it with the Bob Ross colors, right? It doesn't want to blend away with all that white that we're going across, which keeps it right out here in the foreground and keeps it looking freaking neat. If you ask me. I mean, I'm kind of partial because it's my own painting, but I think it looks cool. I don't know what you guys think, but I think it looks kind of cool. All right, we're gonna come over here like this, kind of like that, and we're gonna grab up some more of our odorless mineral spirits. I'm gonna mix them into our mead and black paint down in there. Right over here like this. Getting it nice and wet on the brush. And then we gotta come off and make all sorts of little crazy, watch this, shoot it straight down through, right? Little branch come out. Branch, my man, right out in here. Maybe you wanted to grow and connect with a palm tree like that. Never know. Maybe he grew out into our scene that way off of his long little brother over here. If it's going to be that big, you got to kind of make your trunk that big to hold all that weight of that branch out there, in my mind, anyway. We got a couple little bits streaking up here, shooting off over there, right? All with that mead and black paint, it stays nice and dark. Branch off that side. Over here, we're trying to stay into our lighter areas, and that way you can watch your branch come to life as you spin it, roll it all the way across the canvas. But you got to have enough odorless mineral spirits, and you got to have enough of our meat and lamp black paint in order for it to drag and move like it is versus being very stuck or um, sticky, right? If it gets sticky, it's not going to come off the brush very well. And then you're going to be like, why does my, why do my branches break like this? You know what I mean? They shouldn't be breaking like this. Why are they breaking like this? Well, your branch, uh, your brush isn't thick enough. It's not wet enough. You don't have enough, the right consistency of the paint to allow it to remain dark and have these real long little branchy branches. Yeah, I said branchy branches. <laughs> Maybe this guy down here. Little guy popping off over to the side. Whip! Cool little things, right? Just back into that colored area. That's why I said we don't need to worry about the grass. No one's going to be looking at it. All it is is some background for what we're looking at, our little foreground pieces, right? Our, our focal points. Come down on this guy. Shoot it off that way over here. Maybe there's one off there. Maybe there's a little branch right there out in the front. You never know where they're going to come from, so just drop them in. Drop them in. How far do they want to run? How far do they want to roll? Take off, live. Right? Get all these cool little things. Let's start to happen. 
little branchy bits popping off here, over there, just little things. You don't have to have, you don't have to paint every single little smallest, teeniest, tiniest detail. You know what I mean? Like, we get away with a lot. You don't have to do too much because of the way that we have everything set up, the way that our scene is laid out, right? It seems like it's full, even though it's not that busy. I hate busy paintings that just look like they they just ran out of ideas. They're like, well, yeah, just throw that in there too. Might as well. You know what I mean? Oh, you know what? The one thing we almost forgot to put in this was a little ring wraith. I'm glad that we had stopped. Because we need a little ring wraith coming off into our scene. Cool little tree branches. Okay. Now, in order to make our little Nazgul flying through the sky, for those of you who like uh, Lord of the Rings... This should be sort of neat and sort of fun. Now we have to pick a bright area, so let's go up in here. And we're gonna go with, I'm rubbing that little guy out right there. Hey, just like that. Now, we got our very liquidy paint on the brush. We need to make his wings first. So his wings are gonna go sort of up and down, almost like, uh, like um, eyebrows, like you're going, whoa, <laughs> looking at it like that, right? Wing will come down here. They almost need to touch in the middle anyway. Just like a big M shape. Almost like an upside down bird. Now we'll take his head. A touch and come straight down through. Rotate down. Flying down like that, right? Very cool. All you got to do is thicken it up in some areas. Make sure it's nice and thin. Around his head. Very cool. Maybe we can do... I won't be able to show you guys, but... Maybe we can do a couple little details out here on his head like a little horns or something some sort of something out there there we go got some spikies on his back too that's really neat right now we got to fill in his wings he looks kind of funny without wings like that's there's no way those are going to hold him up all right so we're going to start to fill this guy in streak him down longer There we go. There we go. Caw! Right? Flying out through the sky. Just sort of filling him in back into his little body area, right? And then how far do his little wings go out? Well, that depends. Depends on who? Depends on you. <laughs> now his neck looks a little small compared to the rest of his body, so. Picking up his neck a bit. There we go. Maybe we'll give him some spikes off his spikes off his back or something. That looks really cool. <laughs> uh, now it all looks like one thing, so you have to go back and highlight it just a little, have them stand out, separate each other a bit. Just a touch, but up there, that's a pretty cool little dragon, if you ask me. That was one of the, uh, one of the requested, uh, details was to have a dragon up there in the sky. A little Nazgul. Cover him in, fill him in like that. All right, maybe out here, he's got a little bit of the highlight on his dragon wings. Fits. We can add a few little details up in there too. A few little details around him. Right? Little places where he'd be a little brighter. A little bit. If you can get the white to drop off the brush, right? That's the that's the hard part, getting the white to drop off. That white doesn't want to come off the brush easily sometimes. There. See if we can brighten up his innards. A little bit of white paint, his underside, just so it's a bit different. That's why we don't normally paint animals. <laughs> They're a big pain in the butt. There we go. 
Boom, 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 boom. Now, if we could just get a bit of him to brighten up underneath. There we go. Bit of our white. All right, there we go. And those little different colors into the shadowy bits. Doesn't all have to be the same, but we want it to sort of mix it. You want to have it, at least I do, I want it to be different. I want it to all be the same bit. That's very cool. You're like, Caw -caw! <laughs> oh man. Ah! Very neat. Now, I'm just going to try to soften him just a bit with one of our filbert brushes just to try to blend those guys a little bit more together. There we go. I mean, that ain't too bad for a dragon. I mean, for somebody who never does a dragon, that's not too bad of a dragon. I don't do uh, I don't do animals and stuff, so that ain't too bad if you ask me. A little bit more of our black in there, just to kind of shadow some areas and highlight some things. There we go. Yeah, that's not bad actually. I don't hate it. Normally, when I do something, then I don't normally do I hate it you know what I mean but uh, I like this little guy this old little dragon dragon <laughs> oh man all right let's put that little bit a little bit of white highlight up there underneath him it's pretty cool sit here and work on this bit since it's our last piece there we go sometimes you just need one little thing just one little thing and then you go oh that was it that was it I dig it. I'm done with that guy. I'm done with that old guy. Now, there is not much left to do besides highlighting our tree. All right, so we're going to take a bit of our crimson and white, and we're going to make up like a, a little pinky tree bark sort of deal. All right, a little bit of white, a little bit of crimson. However color, ooh, it's like very fuchsia-y. Whatever color you want it to be, right? Say most of our light came off of here, so we're just going to tap it in. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, look at that color. Tap, 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 tap. I'm going to come over here. Trying to stay inside the darkness. Don't want to go on the outside of it. Don't have to be on the outside of the trunk. You want to be on the inside of that sucker. Right on the inside, right there. Don't even have to go all the way to the top. Take some of our dark paint, come around from the back so we get that same type of textury feel, right? But it's all the darkness back here. There we go. Very cool. Now we're going to see every single piece of our wood anyway. No one's checking out all of our wood. Very neat. Little bits of trunk different things all we need yeah baby look at that all right now we're gonna come over here same thing just touching with our pink grabbing it up touching it up over here over there riding up the tree yeah i wonder if these trees had a pineapple on it that'd be funny like um supposed to be for the palm tree like no these trees pineapple trees you have no idea it's a pineapple it's a pen pineapple apple pen. You guys remember that video? Pen pineapple apple pen. Very cool. Look at that. Ah, oh, wicked. Okay, now, like this, let's take, maybe if we can get the last little bit of pink onto our brush down here. We can, oh yeah, start popping in little bits of pinkness. All right, and these guys, we can have a few more little details on. We don't want to hit our, our, um, <laughs> our gravestone. I don't want to hit him 
You can always go back and fix it if you do, but just like that, right in between there. A couple little dark areas, a couple little bright areas, a couple little separation areas in between. Base of where our trees come in, right there. This guy. Really cool. Really cool, guys. That one turned out really neat. So I hope you got a cool title for it. Because whoever has the best title gets to name it. You got the best title in my mind. You get to name the painting. So I don't think, unless our buyer is here watching, if Gene is here, uh, I don't know if Gene is here or not, but hey, 100% of people said they would watch again. That's cool. You are amazing. Not me, Bobby Coday. You. Ooh, Dimensions of Death. That's a cool title. That's a cool title. Hey, Gene is here watching. So Gene gets to pick the title, not me. You guys, good. I don't want to pick it. I don't like picking the title. It's too much pressure. So you guys help Gene come up with a title for this little painting. It says it's for his daughter. It's a secret. It's a secret. But come him, help him come up with a, with a title that would fit like a 17-year-old's room, right? Don't be like, you know, I don't know, something that kids don't like, you know, kids are weird nowadays. They don't like anything. My kid doesn't like anything. I'm like, oh, you want to go do this? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. No worries. So help Gene come up with a title. It's for his daughter. I hope I'm not ruining the surprise. I hope I'm not. And if I am, then I'm sorry. Uh, you shouldn't have told me because I have a big mouth and I have about 90 minutes to kill every night up here to fill with useless info. So if you don't want uh, somebody knows something, don't tell me that. Otherwise, it could come out at any moment during the show. Wicked. Wicked. Boop, boop. Couple little bits, guys. That's all we need. So, has Gene come up with a title? Gene also bought, uh, earlier today, he also bought a, um, a flag painting. It's been a while since, I mean, since September 11th that I did a flag painting. But uh, he messaged me and said, hey, I really like your flag paintings, and I want an original one. Um, you know, do you have time? Could you do one? I said, sure, I could do one. I'd love to do one. There we go. So I did the flag painting, but I did it off screen because I've done so many flag paintings. I have enough tutorials of flag paintings. I don't need to do them on camera anymore. And I asked him if it was okay that if I did it off screen, since he was going to get this one on the show anyway, um, and he's like, yeah, absolutely, do it off screen. So we did that one earlier today, and I actually already took it down to the garage to dry, so I couldn't even show it to you if I wanted to. Couldn't even show you if I wanted to. So I hope you like this one, Gene. And um, Gene was on a mad tear inside of the store today, let me tell you. Just a mad tear. He got one painting for himself, and then he was like, you know what? I have to get one for the kiddo, too, so he ended up getting one for his little kid. Not little. I mean, I got a little kid. He's got a grown kid. Well, not not grown. I mean, he's almost almost grown, right? 17's almost grown. But shoot, he, 24 is almost grown. Doesn't have to be in the teens anymore. These kids can't move out anymore. Everything's too dang expensive. Wicked. Oh, man. All right, one little piece, Gene. One little bit of white on top of this guy, if we can get just the smallest little touch. Little bit. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Zip, zap, zoop. Come up in just very, very small little things. Woo, okay. Alrighty, guys. Let's get our Zen art brushes all cleaned up because these brushes are fantastic, dude. Fantastic brushes. Uh, and honestly, um, I might take tomorrow off, guys. I might. I might. I'm, I'm going to have to start taking more than one day off a week. So Tuesday might be the day. It might be a Tuesday, Wednesday, back-to-back, -back, no painting from Josh week. Uh, I'll still put out reels and stuff on that day, but... You know, I mean, my wrist doesn't hurt as much, but if I don't give it a break, you know what I mean? It's going to break. <laughs> and then uh, we won't be able to do anything. 
and I won't be able to make money because this is how I make my living. I teach you guys how to paint, and every so often someone goes over and buys one of my paintings and keeps me in business. Speaking of which, it's 50% off in the store this week only. So, if there ever was a time to buy a Paint With Josh painting, now is the time. Now is the time. So head over there, paintwithjosh.etsy.com, and see what I have available. Right? I've got lots of different paintings uh, from different subject matter. I've got blue winter scenes. We've got crazy green Halloween scenes. I've got paintings with UFOs in them, like this guy, which we didn't give him lights. Hold on. Hold, please. How are we supposed to know he's a UFO 10 years in the future when they're looking at the thing if I don't put lights on it? Boop, 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 beep. Little teeny tiny guy out there. <clears throat> All right. Well, guys, this one turned out amazing, if you ask me. Just amazing. We got to get a name for it. So, Gene, hit me with the name. What do you got for this painting? And did someone uh, suggest the name to you, or did you come up with it yourself? Are we giving somebody a shout-out in the cup? Oh, my God, guys. I'm literally one inch away from my trash can, and I just missed that whole big ball of paper towel. How is that possible? How is that possible? Grave Dreaming. I know she's sleeping. Okay, good. So, Grave Dreaming. Did anybody come up with that? Or did you come up with it? Do we need to give somebody a shout out? Man, I'm good. 90 minutes on the dot. Did I say it would take 90 minutes? I did say it would take 90 minutes. I did say that. So, just like this. Now this one, we had to skip numbers because I'll tell you a story. 961, like that. Now, when I did, um, I did his painting earlier today, it was 9.59, and then Anna, one of my best uh, mods and clients, she sent me a message that her painting got damaged during shipping, and I was like, ah! So I had to repaint her another one uh, earlier today, which was 9.60, and then this one for tonight became 9.61. So, what did we say it was called again? I'd ramble on, and then I forget. Forget my kid, I might keep this for myself. That's funny. What was the name again? Something dr Grave Dreaming? Tiffany Wallach. Was it Tiffany? That was Airy Fairy Faye, somebody said. Wanda G. Just give me the title. Grave Dreaming. I'm pretty sure that was it. Okay. Grave Dreaming. Perfect, perfect. Uh, it's the 25th today? Yeah. 24? No, it's 25th. What day is it? What day is it? Give me my clock. 25th. Okay. I have a digital clock on the wall. It says the 25th over there. Always helping me out. Okay, where are we all going to go right after this stream is over? Do you know where you're supposed to go? Well, you're supposed to go over to Facebook to uh, see the photo of the painting be completed and posted. But we're all going to go to paintwithjosh.com, and that's going to take you everywhere. It's going to take you to my YouTube page. It's going to take you to the Facebook page. It's going to take you to TikTok, over to Instagram, to my Amazon affiliate shop, where I, can, where I sell all of these things, right? I mean, I don't sell them. You guys just buy them through my link, and I get a little commission off of them. Uh, you can find my Amazon wish list over there. So you can send me markers, gloves, all the stuff that I use to come you know, give you guys free videos. It all costs money, right? So if you help me out there, that works. You can always buy the paintings. You can support by buying hats or, you know, merchandise items. You know, <laughs> lots of different things available in the store. Not just paintings, right? Lots of different colors of hats too. Hey, ladies. Hey, look like Eminem when I put on a white hat. So, <laughs> okay, we're gonna come over here. This one turned out fantastically. So I don't want to hang out for too much longer up here tonight. It's already late. This was a 90 minute show. So we gotta get this one down and drying right next to its companion so we can send it out to Gene. So 
Uh, we'll say goodbye to the Facebook and the YouTube crew. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in and hanging out with me during the stream. Maybe the YouTube people can't see. Hi, how you doing? Hey, how was your night? That was good? Excellent, right on. So, uh, like I said, uh, thank you guys for being here and tuning in. Make sure you give me a thumbs up every time you see me over on YouTube or anytime you see one of my posts. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up, right? The more little thumbs ups you have, equate to more views. The more views means we get more revenue from YouTube, which means we can continue to buy canvases and bring you free shows, right? So, until I see you guys again next time, over there on YouTube, take care, have the rest of a good day, and ba bow Man, it was a good show. Good Monday night. Good night on a Monday. What a time we had today.